Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mike and the Marines Memorial for honoring us veterans. And uh, I want to particularly say it's a pleasure to be here with uh, Joe Galloway again. Joe was our Ernie Pyle, you know, and uh, we didn't have many of those in Vietnam. And he was there with us and he shared the three most important things, the mud, the blood, and the beer. And that makes you one of us. You know, certain things remind you of your service in a conflict somewhere. It may be a smell that whiffs across the air. It may be a song that's played from that era. But something hits you and reminds you. And sometimes several things happen that bring you back. All of us have memories. As we just witnessed here, all our memories are not the same. For some of us, it's about the sacrifice we saw, the courage, the honor we saw on the battlefield, and maybe there are others that saw other incidents. I believe those that saw the honor and the courage and the sacrifice were in the vast majority, but that isn't the case for everybody, and we have to accept that. We were brothers in arms. We were young. We went on to a battlefield that no one understood, least of all our political leaders. We fought hard. We never lost a battle. I can say that in two tours in Vietnam, in my first tour, I lived in the villages. I lived with the people. I rarely saw another American. I saw Vietnamese that wanted to be free, wanted something like what we had. And I saw Vietnamese Marines that died for it. And I didn't see them ever resent the fact that we were there. I talked about these things that remind you of that time. I recently was at the convention or conference of the Society of American Historians in Kansas City. One week where almost 600 historians came together, military historians. And as you went around to the different places, the different venues, they all talked about something in military history. And of course, I focused right on those sessions that dealt with the Vietnam War. You know what, sort of echoing Joe, I didn't see anybody there that was an historian or many of them that had really been of that generation or been there. They analyzed the war and, or tried to in very cold analytical ways that just didn't ring. One elderly gentleman stood up, historian, and he said, I have trouble with what we're saying here. He says, where do we put Vietnam? We've never figured it out. And he was talking to his brother historians. Unlike the wars, and they were talking about Afghanistan and Iraq and many of the conflicts that came after that, they couldn't place it in the history. For a lot of reasons, it was very different, some of which we saw the emotion here tonight. But it was our war. It was our war that we saw as young men and young women. And we saw that war from the battlefield. Nothing on that battlefield can be completely perfect. You know, Clausewitz said there's the friction and fog of war, there's the emotion of war. But let me say a few things about those that go on to the battlefield. Those that see the good side and the bad side of what you do, have their hearts torn out, see things on the battlefield they can't believe. I saw far more atrocities committed by the North Vietnamese and the VC, by the way. And that's not to put down anybody else's feelings. I served in 1st Battalion, 5th Marines. I was the commander of Alpha Company that same year. I can guarantee you that nothing like that happened in my, my company. And I will tell you that my Marines, many of whom paid with their own lives, really felt they were fighting for each other. It's all about brotherhood. When you come down to a battlefield where you're not sure where the support is, you're not sure where the political direction has led you, in the end, it's that brother, soldier, sailor, airman, marine that's fighting by your side that leads you where, where you are. There's a strange thing about war and conflict. The politicians that get you into it go away, never reflect on it, never learn the lessons. The war belongs to those that were on the battlefield. Again, those that went through the mud, the blood, and the beer. You own the war. Good, bad, or indifferent, all of us that served in Vietnam own that war. We own that war because 
We either shed our blood, and believe me, I poured plenty of mine into that soil. We lost good Marines, good soldiers, good airmen, good sailors in that war. We fought for something we believed in in the beginning, certainly. We hoped it would turn out. I was at a restaurant in Reston, Virginia, two weeks ago. The waiter that was serving me came up, and I noticed his name tag. It was a Vietnamese name. It was Tung. And I spoke Vietnamese. And I assumed this young man was the son of somebody that came from Vietnam, maybe the boat people. And I said, Tung, in, in Vietnamese, I said, do you speak Vietnamese? His English had been, was absolutely perfect. He said, well, of course I do. I was born in Vietnam. And I said, well, you're very young. He said, I came here two years ago. I said, two years ago? He, I said, how, do, how come you speak such perfect English? He said, when I got here, I couldn't speak a word of English. I learned my English in two years. I'm going to school. And I said, well, how did you come here so late? He said, it was because of my father. My father worked with the Americans. And all I ever heard growing up was how great the Americans were. And my dream was to come to America. And he said, I have now lived my dream. I am here. And everything that my father told me about America is true. And it broke my heart because all my South Vietnamese friends that I saw, that I saw die to fight for something, maybe something we should have done a better job at delivering, they didn't get. I mean, the Vietnamese today, if you go back, I guess, call it the American War. I can't go back. I've been offered a lot of times to go back. I cannot step on that soil because of what I believe they should have gotten that what I saw they fought for, what I saw my units of the Vietnamese Marines die for. It wasn't there. I did an assessment in Iraq for Ray Odierno, who was then the commander, now chief of staff of the Army. And Ray said to me toward the end of the conflict, one thing we need to do is we need to leave this battlefield with honor. And I thought about Vietnam. The politics can be messy. Things can happen out there that stick in our craws, Americans. But in, in the end, the vast majority of our servicemen and women need to come off that battlefield with honor. They do everything they're asked to do. They win every battle. Sometimes they're dealt a hand that's impossible to win, but it has nothing to do with their courage. I was in Somalia when we first went in, and I remember the first KIA in Somalia. His name was PFC Arroyo. I was the director of operations. I got a call late at night, and it was a report from one of our units that was on pat patrol in Mogadishu. And they said, sir, we got into a firefight, and we have a KIA. And they gave me his name, PFC Arroyo. I couldn't sleep that night because I thought about Arroyo. He died in some dirty street in Mogadishu, Somalia. I venture there are a few Americans could find that place on a map. I venture there are a few Americans that even remember Somalia. You can't even be considered a veteran if you were there and fought, by the way our crazy laws are and that describe periods that you can be called a veteran. And I thought about Arroyo's death. It's easy to fall into the trap to say it was a waste. What did he die for? I know what Arroyo died for. He was a Marine. His unit was called to serve. He didn't question. He went out there and he was the point man on that patrol. He died with honor. You can question the war. You can question the circumstances. You can condemn the politicians, but never ever condemn the warrior. The warrior goes out there. Battle sears our souls. It forms who we are. I think if you see your war as a young man or woman, you see it differently than those that see the war that come later in lives. I see generals, 
that see their first experience in conflict after they become generals or colonels, and it's not to put them down, that's just the way fate is dealt. What's not seared into their soul is being at the point of the spear. I saw this in Iraq and Afghanistan. When you don't understand what that PFC goes through, when you haven't been down there with that lieutenant and captain and sergeant, and you don't have that mud on your boots, it can't form for you later in life the kinds of judgments and decisions and advice you need to give. We're all formed by that bond on the battlefield. It's what we inherit. It becomes part of our life. It forms who we are. I would say to all of you tonight, despite the emotions you felt, despite the disagreements you have, despite what you saw in the horrors of war, because let me tell you, in war, you don't only see the horrors, you see some magnificent things in terms of sacrifice and appreciation of the people you're there to help. You see the bond and the brotherhood that nothing else in, on this earth can ever create. And you walk off that battlefield with all these emotions and all these things going through, it, through you. But there's one thing never to forget, the brotherhood of having been there and done that. It's something no one can take away from you. It's not about the politics. It's not about bringing a better way of life somewhere in the remotest part of the world. In the end, it comes down to that soldier, sailor, or marine that's on your left or right flank. That's who you fight for. That's who you're willing to die for. All of you in this room that have served know that. Get rid of your devils. Be proud that you answered the call to duty. Be proud that we gave us our best shot. Understand that we weren't perfect. And God bless you all.